are ocarinas. Hi, ocarinas. This one's kind of quiet. Beautiful. These are um, these were what they used to float fish nets back in the day. Metal. Metal. They use glass too. Yeah. We used to find them on the beach when we were kids. And, um, that's where I found these on the beach when I was a kid for oh, my yeah. brothers. And um, <laughs> so I've had these since I was like five or something like that. And, um, these actual ones. These actual ones. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. They used to come up before plastic. This is what they had to make things float. Of course, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's Which is sort of amazing. And uh, another cool thing, like um, they had oil inside them so that they wouldn't rust. Oh. And this is very early. You know, this was industrial welding in those days. And, wow. Um, as you can see, it's really lumpy. And it makes me feel not so bad about not being the world's greatest welder. Because this is what like the, the professionals did in those days. Yeah. You know, and they're like um, this one. Let's see. Yeah, I can't really. Yeah, there you oh, yeah. See, those are just like. Yeah. You know. Nice and gnarly. Yeah, that's a that's an ugly weld. You know? I love it though. <laughs> but I love their breathy sound. Mm. That's another thing I wanted to say about wind instruments mm. is getting breath into music is really important to me, especially music without singing in it. Mm -hmm. You know, music with singing is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. I don't really associate the two. Like a song is kind of about its words. Mm -hmm. And so you're listening with a, a verbal concept in yeah. your brain. And it's, it's still music and it's still a song and all that kind of stuff. But, but it's not like music of sound. It's, not, it's yeah. not really about that. It's really about what the words are. Yeah. You know, and there's a few singers that don't use words, mm -hmm. but not very many of them. Mm -hmm. Usually singers have words. And I've noticed even with, um, oh, what was that band? Dead Can Dance. I remember they were really popular. Dead for Dead Can Dance, they were called. Dead Can Dance. And they did this kind of oh, faux world music kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And this woman sang beautifully. She had this beautiful voice. And you always thought she was singing in, oh, Farsi or, you know, yeah. Some wonderful language, but she just made up syllables and sang. Oh, yeah. But still, even listening to her do that and not sing words, you were still thinking there were words that were meaning something. Right. You know, so... Um, still trying to figure it out. And, yeah. So I think like having wind instruments is really important to me in music because it gives it breath. Yeah. And a lot of what I get, um, you know, just over the course of my life, I've gotten super bored of rock and roll and mm -hmm. music with... That's all strings or maybe keyboards. Right. Like that doesn't have breath in it. Mm -hmm. You know, what attracted me to jazz as a 17 year old was, oh yeah, it's like really, it's music and it's like actually has some personality and. You can hear the soul breath. Right. The breath is different. And, yeah. And I think that. Um, you have so much control over a, a breathed instrument. It's so. You have both your hands on it and your breath going into it. Yeah. So it's the most personal sound of any instrument. Right. You know, some people sound very personal, even on pianos and stuff mm. like that. But um, Yeah, with some both strings, you can get there slightly, yeah. but it's not the same. Yeah. But no two saxophone players sound alike, right. no matter how hard they try. Yeah. You know, when I was coming up, like, everybody, like, just wanted to sound like Coltrane. Mm -hmm. and, and they got close, but mm -hmm. you could always tell it wasn't culture, mm -hmm. you know, and like, so that's a, you know, I love wind instruments for that. Yeah. And these are very breathy. This one especially, it's like, if it, when I record this, I have to have a mic like right there, yeah. you know. And these work on your volume. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is you lift a finger off, you, um, it changes the effective volume of the inside. It makes, um, it makes this sphere smaller. Like you know, it doesn't matter what finger. So even just that little bit matters. Yeah. That's amazing. 
and how big the hole is matters. Right. Two at once. All at once. Oh. <laughs> and so they're kind of cool that way. Um, this one, if I'd done a better job on this angle of the edge tone thing, mm -hmm. it would be a little louder. Like I did a better job. This is the second one. Okay. Right. But I like this one because it sounds like somebody kind of blowing in your ear a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really. Like the whispers it's, from the other side. Yeah, kind of like. And there's no attack at all. This one. Right. This one. Yeah. It won't even do that. It wants you to coax this thing out of it. Yeah. So it's kind of a cool thing. I, I love these guys. Yeah. I like these guys. They're gorgeous. You know? yeah. And so they do the same thing volume-wise as the slide whistles. Okay. Where yeah. it's about the volume of the air moving inside. This right. makes their, you know, if you lift off the hole, that means the air around the hole is not going to vibrate and bounce. Mm -hmm. It's just going to escape. Yeah. yeah. So it makes it smaller by making it. You know, okay. Just kind of interesting to me. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought that yeah. intuitively. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> Until next time.